With the onset of a spinal cord injury, your life changes in many ways. You are beginning to experience new ways of doing things and adapting your environment to accommodate your needs. Many changes have taken place within your body. Internal functions that once worked automatically now require external assistance. A very important program in the adaptation process is proper bowel management. Normally, when stool moves into the rectum, a message is sent to the brain from the rectal nerves and the urge to have a bowel movement is felt. And if the urge comes at an inconvenient time, the passage of stool can be controlled by tightening the sphincter muscles. After an injury, however, the urge to have a bowel movement usually cannot be felt and the passage of stool cannot be stopped. Although rectal nerves are still stimulated by the presence of stool, messages cannot reach the brain because of the damage to the spinal cord. And because the sphincter muscles can no longer be controlled, the ability to control or stop the passage of stool is lost. It is important to understand that although you can no longer feel the urge to have a bowel movement, it is still going to take place. This does not mean, however, that you cannot control this process. By establishing a bowel program, you can prevent involuntaries and keep your stool the right consistency, which will prevent diarrhea, constipation, and other health problems. Successful bowel management consists of three parts. A regular bowel movement at consistently spaced intervals, good eating habits, and, in many cases, regulated medication. The first part of successful bowel management is a regular bowel program. A bowel program is a method of stimulating the rectum to produce a bowel movement when you want it. There are three methods used to stimulate the rectum for a bowel program. Mechanical, chemical, and a combination of mechanical and chemical methods. The mechanical method creates friction in the rectum, which stimulates the rectal nerves. The DIL procedure is a common method of mechanical stimulation. It is accomplished by using the index finger or a DIL stick to stimulate the rectum. The DIL procedure is the simplest, most convenient method of stimulating the bowel. The chemical method of stimulation involves the use of suppositories. The chemical in the suppository, rather than friction, stimulates the rectal nerves. Generally, a bowel program does not involve using suppositories alone. However, patients with incomplete injuries may find using suppositories more comfortable than using the DIL procedure. The third method of stimulation, a combination of chemical and mechanical methods, combines the use of a suppository with the DIL procedure. It may be suggested that you use the combination method to establish your bowel program. The combination method may also be useful if you have constipation because suppositories help move stool down into the rectum. Because it is the most common method of causing a bowel movement after injury, we will now take a closer look at the digital stimulation or DIL procedure. The term DIL is short for dilation, which means to relax and open up. The DIL procedure works because it stimulates rectal nerves, which move stool down to the rectum, and it relaxes the sphincter muscles, allowing stool to pass. The procedure has eight steps. Step one involves gathering the items necessary for performing the DIL procedure and placing them where they can be reached easily. You will need the following items. Chucks, a box of disposable plastic gloves, Vaseline or water-soluble lubricant such as KY jelly or Surgilube, toilet paper, soap and water, disposable washcloths, and plastic bags. Step two, get into the correct position. If you are able to sit up, do so. You can sit on a commode, a padded toilet seat, or an elevated toilet seat. If you are not able to sit up, you should lie in bed and place the chucks under your buttocks. Lie on your left side because your colon comes down on the left. Step three, lubricate. 
Put on a plastic glove and coat your index finger with Vaseline, which will lubricate your finger so it doesn't damage delicate rectal tissue. Never dill without lubrication. Step 4. Insert your finger. Start by gently pressing the tip of your index finger against the sphincter muscle at the rectal opening. The pressure will cause the sphincter muscle to relax and open up so you can easily slide your finger into the rectum. Your finger should be no further in than your first finger joint, about one half inch to one inch. Step five, begin the dill motion to stimulate rectal nerves. Dill for five minutes, stop for five to 10 minutes. Dill for five to 10 minutes, stop for five to 10 minutes. There are several techniques you can use. The most common technique is a gentle circular motion of the finger. You might also try a gentle back and forth motion from one side of the rectum to the other. The most important thing to remember is to use gentle motion and pressure. This will prevent damage to sensitive rectal tissue. Step six, allow stool to pass. As stool moves down, you will feel it with your finger. If you have impaired sensation or no sensation in your fingers, or if you use a dill stick, you will need to periodically stop dilling and listen for a stool passing out of rectum. Gently pull the rectum to one side to allow stool to pass out. If stool doesn't move out easily, you can gently nudge it to help it pass. But don't pull stool out or make any other rough movements that could damage tissue. Step seven, repeat the dill. Once stool has passed, repeat the dill as often as necessary until your bowel is empty. You will know the bowel is empty if you cannot feel any more stool after doing the dill for a total of 15 to 25 minutes. The time required varies greatly from person to person. Step eight, clean up. Once the dill is finished, clean the rectal area thoroughly with toilet paper. Then wash with soap and water and a disposable washcloth. Be sure to dry off well to prevent skin sores. Finally, collect all stool and disposable materials used in the procedure. Dispose of these in a tied plastic bag. There are two problems, however, that you need to be aware of when using the dill procedure. Autonomic hyperreflexia and rectal bleeding can occur directly as a result of the dill procedure. Autonomic hyperreflexia is a dangerous condition that can occur if your injury is at T6 or above. The symptoms of autonomic hyperreflexia include pounding headache, blotching of skin, goosebumps, sweating above the level of injury, high blood pressure, and slow pulse. If you experience these symptoms while performing the dill, stop the dill immediately. Then either come to or remain in a sitting position and wait for symptoms to stop. It is important to complete your bowel program after symptoms stop, or you may get constipation, which can also lead to hyperreflexia. However, you should be careful not to cause hyperreflexia again while completing the dill. There are four techniques you can use to make hyperreflexia less likely. First, dill very gently too rough a dill is a common cause of hyperreflexia. Second, you may want to use an anesthetic lubricant such as nupercanal instead of Vaseline water-soluble lubricant. Third, be prepared to stop the dill again if symptoms of hyperreflexia return. You may have to stop the dill, wait for symptoms to pass and start again several times. Finally, you might want to use a suppository and not do the dill if hyperreflexia continues. If your injury is at T6 or above, be sure to view the video Autonomic Hyperreflexia and discuss it with your nurse. The second problem that may occur during the dill procedure is rectal bleeding. Rectal bleeding can be caused by anything that tears or injures rectal tissue. Some examples include too rough a dill, hard and dry stool, hemorrhoids, or long fingernails. 
If you have only a few spots of blood during the dill procedure, you can treat the problem yourself. First, figure out if the bleeding is being caused by hard, dry stool or by too rough a dill. You can soften stool by including more fluids and more high-fiber foods in your diet. These foods absorb water during digestion. You may also start taking stool softeners or increasing your dosage if you are already taking them. If you have rectal bleeding but stool is soft, your dill could be too rough. Try a more gentle dill. Use more lubricant or use suppositories only in your bowel program for a few days to give tissue time to heal. If your rectal bleeding is more than just a few spots, don't try to treat it yourself. Notify your doctor instead. Although you need to be aware of these possible problems, doing the dill procedure should not worry you. The dill is a safe, simple procedure that has been used for years by people with spinal cord injuries. It can become a routine part of your life. And as you become more familiar with it, the dill will get easier and go faster. After your program has been established, you may notice a pattern in which your bowel movement amount will fluctuate between almost nothing one day to large the next. If this pattern continues for two weeks, you may try an every other day bowel program. You should discuss this with your nurse before making the change. If you do change to an every other day program, the dill procedure itself will be the same. The procedure should be done at the same time of day, whether you are on a daily or every other day program. Consistency is important because it sets up a habit and trains your bowels to empty quickly and completely. While you are at Craig, your nurses will help you establish a regular consistent bowel program. The second part of successful bowel management involves good eating habits. This includes eating high fiber foods at regular times and drinking plenty of fluids. Eating habits are extremely important because the foods that you eat can affect the wave-like motion that pushes stool through the bowel. Diarrhea or involuntaries are often caused by spicy foods, alcohol, or too much caffeine or sugar, which can irritate the intestines and cause the wave-like motion to speed up. You should avoid these foods or eat them in moderation. Constipation, on the other hand, is usually caused by what you're not eating, fiber, Adding high-fiber foods to your diet helps prevent constipation because they help keep stool the right consistency and promote the wave-like motion. The recommended intake of fiber is 20 to 35 grams daily. High-fiber foods include fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grain breads. Adding bran to your daily diet is one easy way to make sure you can get enough fiber. Fluids are important in combination with a high-fiber diet because high-fiber foods absorb water as they move through the intestines. This helps in keeping stool soft. However, your bladder drainage method is a factor in determining how much fluid you should drink daily. If you are on an intermittent catheterization program, fluids are usually restricted. With an indwelling catheter, large amounts of fluid are recommended. In general, it is recommended that you drink 10 to 12 cups of liquids each day. Your nurse will work with you to determine the exact amount of fluids you need. So, if you have a problem with either constipation or diarrhea, check your diet. The foods you eat may be causing the problem. If you have a continuing problem, ask your doctor or nurse for advice. The third part of successful bowel management includes regulating your medication. Some medications have side effects that can lead to diarrhea or constipation. Medications that cause diarrhea include some antibiotics. Medications that can cause constipation include cold medications and medications used to control bladder spasms. Your doctor, nurse, or pharmacist will be able to tell you if a medication could affect bowel management, but it's your responsibility to ask. Stool softeners and laxatives must also be regulated. Stool softeners, which work in a way similar to high-fiber foods, hold water in the stool and keep it soft. Laxatives, like irritating foods, speed up the wave-like motion, causing stool to pass more quickly 
so less water is absorbed during digestion. Laxatives are not recommended for use on a regular basis because they can overstimulate the bowel and cause involuntaries. Stool softeners are recommended for regular use if needed. However, you need to get the right dose because many stool softeners will cause diarrhea. You may have to experiment with stool softeners to find the right dose for you. With the right dose, stool will pass easily without being watery. Your spinal cord injury handbook contains advice about how to find the right stool softener dose. We've discussed the two main goals of bowel management, which include preventing involuntaries and keeping the stool the right consistency to prevent diarrhea and constipation. And we've discussed the three parts of a successful bowel management program, which include a regular bowel movement at consistently spaced intervals, good eating habits, and in many cases, regulated medication. In addition, there is a three-step process you can use to manage any bowel problem that may arise. Step one, identify the problem. Step two, determine the cause. Step three, treat the cause. If you have a bowel problem and need help, go to your spinal cord injury handbook first. If you have questions about medications, or if you've tried treating the problem and it will not go away, call your doctor. In conclusion, remember to be aware of your stool consistency during the bowel program and be aware of your daily living habits, such as what you eat, what medications you use, and the success of your bowel program. By doing this, you'll be able to prevent many problems and treat others before they become serious. Keep in mind that bowel management is your responsibility. And remember, you are in the best position to know your own body. Your observations and follow-up could be the key to good bowel management.